Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Aaron, and I have with me today Billy Draper. So glad you're here with us. If you did not know, Billy volunteers his time with us to help with the media of our church, helps with video editing and and just a mess of things. So we're so thankful for Billy and what he does. My pleasure. Um, Again, I'm Pastor Aaron, and I want to tell you what we're doing today. So starting this week and hopefully for the weeks to come, we're going to see how it works out. We're going to air a brief discussion like this, a little podcast, if you will, on Tuesday mornings, and we're calling it The Deeper Dive. So what is this? What is going on? What is happening? What is The Deeper Dive? Well, I think the best way to describe what it is is to first start with what it is not. What is what is not the purpose of this little podcast. It's brief every week. What is it not? Well, first thing it is not, it is not a sermon review. Okay. So you may think just based off the content that we're talking about, well, here's what was covered on Sunday. Kind of like, think of it like a Sunday highlight reel. This isn't the Sunday highlight reel. Um, This is not a sermon review. This is not content review. This is a deeper dive. So that's the first thing it is not. It is not a sermon review. It is not a place where you can come get the sermon highlights and kind of get all that. No. What is it really? Well, it's been on my heart and on Pastor Tony's heart, Billy's heart. We've been talking about how do we take what was said on Sunday, make it more of an interpersonal conversation, and maybe two, three people, four people even. We sit down and talk about how do we see fruit in our lives based off what was said on Sunday. So think of it like this. We're going to take each week what the sermon was on Sunday morning and try to, through interpersonal conversation, try to formulate a picture of what that looks like in the everyday life. So think of it just like that. We're trying to give a picture. We're trying to draw the image. What does this really look like? When Pastor Tony speaks on the promises of Abraham, like he has been for the last three or four weeks. We've just finished the series, but what does that look like in our lives? Yes, that is great biblical knowledge. That is a great understanding. And for some people, you might not need this, right, Billy? I mean, right. some people may hear the sermon on Sunday and be like, oh, I got it. I know exactly how to apply that to my life. I know what that looks like. I have the picture in my head. I, I got it. But for some people, they hear the sermon and they're like, well, it made sense. I felt the Lord in it. I believe it. I claim it. The Bible was so compelling that Pastor Tony shared all these scriptures. I'm with it. But what does that look like in my life on a Monday morning when I go to work? What does that look like? Right? So the only review, remember it's not a review. The only review that I'm going to give you today, we'll just get right into it. The only review that I'm going to give is that Pastor Tony has been talking about the promises of Abraham. So if you remember, Abraham is a character way back in the Old Testament before the law of Moses. So this is, this is the OG. All right. The original, he is the original man of faith. So God calls Abraham away from his family, away from his country at the ripe age of 75 years old. That's Genesis chapter 12, 75 years old before he actually made a move of faith. Think about that. Yeah. To to be able to take that. that, just a single word and have that much faith and... Just follow. Exactly. It it changed the course of everything to come. Every single thing. Like everything we have is because of the Lord, but he does it through Abraham. Mm -hmm. And as a side sermon, if you will, like it blows my mind that some of us live 40 years and we're stuck in our ways. But I'm 26 and I feel like I'm stuck in my ways in a few things. Why? that? I almost feel a little prideful because (laughs) Abraham is 75 years old. Mm-hmm. Billy's 75 years old. I mean, that's older than Pastor Tony. <laughs> just, just gotta figure out. He's 75 years old, yeah. and God says, leave it all. Follow me. Go to a place I'll show you. He didn't give him directions. Yeah, no directions or anything. He just said go. Genesis, yeah. Genesis 11 and 12, and he just goes. So he moves on that act of faith, and we learned, and I'll just read one scripture today. Uh, Pastor Tony shared in Galatians chapter 3 that we are all sons of Abraham. So I'm going to read this. Really quick. Here we go. Understand then, this is verse 7, Galatians 3, verse 7. Understand then that those who have faith 
are children of Abraham. In the translation that Pastor Tony read on Sunday, they are the real children of Abraham, the true children of Abraham. Verse 8, Scripture actually foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles, that's the non-physical Jews, by faith. And announced, Scripture announced the gospel in advance to Abraham when he said, I love this, Paul made the connection. Paul said that God actually told Abraham about the gospel before the gospel had come by telling him this. He said, God said, all nations will be blessed through you, Abraham. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. Now, Pastor Tony went through several things of the blessings of Abraham, if you will. And we're not reviewing, but watch the sermon. (laughs) Go watch the sermon. There's so much given to us. And the main thing that I wanted to catch is that it is available to us. Galatians 3 made it clear. If Go watch the sermon and listen to all the promises made to Abraham. And those promises are available to the children of Abraham. And Pastor Tony pointed out there's two lineages, two Mm -hmm. sets of people who are children of Abraham, according to the word. There are the physical children of Abraham. They are the Jews. And a fun fact, you know, like the first Jew wasn't even a Jew. Like, you know, we say Jews are, are an ethnicity, but the first Jew was Abraham who lived in the land of Ur in the land of the Chaldeans. Right. And he's not even, he's, he became a Jew because he obeyed the Lord, <laughs> right? So <laughs> then the physical lineage of Abraham are the mm-hmm. Jewish people today. But the spiritual lineage, as Paul says in Galatians 3, mm-hmm. is those who have faith. Bro, that's you. Yep. That's me. If you have placed your faith in Jesus, who is not the one who abolished the law, what did Jesus say? I've come to fulfill the law. He fulfilled the law of Moses and the promise of Abraham. So if you have faith in Jesus, hallelujah, you are a child of Abraham. And all the promises Pastor Tony has been teaching teaching us on, the promises of Abraham, they belong to us. Hallelujah. Right? Absolutely. I believe you were talking about... um... In Galatians, I've got it here, uh, you go down to 29, and now yeah. that you belong to Christ, you are children of Abraham, you are his heirs, and God promises, God's promises to Abraham belong to you. Belong to you, period. There's a period on it, right? Yes. Like at the very end, that's, there's that's, a period. The no yes. question mark, yep. no comma, it's period. If you belong to Christ, the, the promises of Abraham belong to us. So if you've given your life to Christ and you're living for Christ, voila, Right? But the thing that I wanted to talk about, remember, this is the deeper dive. We understand that that concept. So what does this really look like in our lives? So I guess the question, if you wanted to take it deeper, is do you belong to Christ? Because it's through Christ that you are even what's eligible, right? right. So I wrote down one thing to say. Uh, Pastor Tony made this really clear when he's talking about tithing, and we can mm-hmm. talk about that just in a second. But you, you've got to be a candidate before you can like. How do you become a candidate? Belong to Christ, mm-hmm. right? That's that's how it works. It, this is a conditional thing. So the promises of God through Abraham or to Abraham that are now available to us, they are Pastor Tony said conditional. They're conditional, and he showed us in the Word they are conditional. It's if you do this, then God does this. If you live like this, then God does this. And it's like, it's conditional. Right. It's you know? part of the covenant, just like you said. There's exactly. an if and then there's a then. If and then. Covenant. It's the if and then. It's not and or. It's not It's not a but. It's, it's if this, then this. That's how it is. So let's talk about this for just a second. To belong to Christ, to put this into practice, you have to belong to Christ, to have those promises actually for you to belong to Christ. So on a Monday morning, how... How can you live your life in such a way that you belong to Christ? Now, that sounds like a crazy question. (laughs) But in your heart, you're like, I know I belong to Christ, but let me ask you this. Do other people know you belong to Christ? Just let that sit for a second. Do people who have regular interactions with you know that you belong to Christ? So... If so, they should see the promises of Abraham in your life, right? Because they're available Mm -hmm. to us and they're supposed to be on our life. And not to mention the fruits of the Spirit and all these other things they should see in our life. But do you belong to Christ? So tell me, tell me, Billy, let's talk. Let's talk about this. Belonging to Christ, not just on a Sunday morning because you went to church or a Wednesday night because you went to Bible study or joined the care group. 
belonging to Christ while in the world in a way that people see it. They see it. What? Let's flesh this out. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? To me, I think it goes back to the beginning. Of the first thing is the faith. Yeah. And if your faith is strong, it will show in your actions through your heart. The things you do, the way you, just even a simple greeting to someone yeah. in the morning, you know, a simple hello, you know, God bless you, hope you have a wonderful day. Just It starts at the basic level. Um, That's good. You know, without that kindness, without you said, the fruits of the Spirit, you know, how you're living, yeah. it, it is expressed in how you live every single instance of every single day. And yeah. that is visible to everyone. So it, it starts for me with the faith and in the heart. Starts with faith and in the heart. Hallelujah. It's it's the it's the way you greet your spouse in the morning, right? It's the mm-hmm. it's the way you start the day at home with your kids before they get on the bus. It's the way you it's the way you start your day before you clock in at work. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, uh, I, I think I've been guilty when I worked in, in the secular world. I, I was one way all morning long because I'm not a morning person. And then as soon as I clocked in, I put on my smile for the day, if you will. Right. You know, it's I put on my attitude, you know, my good attitude because I want to rep the kingdom. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, that's I think it's putting it on, you know, putting on that faith and waking up, at, like you said, like a good heart. And then from that point forward, as you go through the day, you know, do people know you belong to Christ by the way you treat your waiter when they mess up? Right. Or the kitchen staff at the restaurant, right? How do you how do you do that? Do you, do they know that you belong to Christ? Is there grace there? Like it's the way that you treat the person who cuts you off in traffic. Oh, I'm coming for somebody today. <laughs> it's like Christians are the worst people in traffic. What is that? Um I feel like it's because they got to get it out because they can't get it out anywhere else. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know. But and that's where God's grace for us comes in. <laughs> yes, thank God for God's grace. But belonging to Christ is is a huge deal. So when we're talking about right. the promises of Abraham, let's let's go deeper. This is the deeper dive every Tuesday. You have to belong to Christ. It's a conditional thing. And you can't do it through the law of Moses. I think the whole fact that Jesus had to come and pay the price and be the ultimate sacrifice mm-hmm. to fulfill the law goes to show is like if we could survive and fulfill the covenant through the law, Jesus would have never had to came, come and pay right. the price. So it's through Jesus, period. And you have that's how we have access to all this. It's through our faith in Jesus that we have access to the promises of Abraham. Protection, prosperity, prosperity. That's prosperity through generations. Like, mm-hmm. now I'm doing a sermon review. Uh, <laughs> it's how how do I get that? It's belong to Christ. Now let's let's go a little deeper. We've hit one level. Let's just go a little deeper with just a few more minutes left. Um, for your for your week. In the everyday. What are some areas in your life? I want you to think about this. What are some areas in your life? And we'll, we'll, we'll be vulnerable here. We'll talk. What are some areas in your life that you think I need to work on? I need to belong to, I need to make it more evident, not just to me, but to the people around me that I belong to Christ. I need to walk this out. I need to, I need to do the if part so God can do the then part. I need to, I want to be a part of this. Yes, I claim Jesus as my Savior, but do you claim Him as your Lord? And do you actually live it? Do you live it in such a way that it's evident you belong to Christ? Let's talk about it. Where do you, where do you need to work? Billy, what you got? For me personally, I think one of my biggest areas of weakness is releasing Release. and letting yeah, Him talk about work. That. Um I overthink a lot of things and I'm always trying to decipher whether or not I'm truly following instead of just listening. I'm interjecting my own opinions into the instructions I'm being given. Ooh. And it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a fault of mine that I work on daily. Yeah. And like we said before, you know, I'm so thankful for God's grace that yeah, after every time I'm like, yeah, but he's like, just stop. We'll, we'll try again in a couple of minutes. Just keep going where I'm going, telling you. Yeah, that, that's that's probably my biggest biggest hang up right now, and it's one of the things I'm trying to work hard on. It makes my chest sink in because <laughs> I'm the same way, um, and I have other things too. Everyone does, but I think the biggest thing for me is, I guess, let, it's letting God. It's letting Him 
letting him do what he does. And and it's remember Abraham is called a man of faith. And I want to pull that up. You probably have faster access to it than I do, Billy. Um, I need to work on my sword drills. Oh, there we go. I got it. Galatians. Got it. So in Galatians 3, what did it say? And you went down to verse 20... 29. 29. 29. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. But let me back up to verse 7, the one that I read earlier. Understanding then that those who have faith... This is me. This is me. Those who have faith are children of Abraham. Those who have faith. Now, we talk about this all the time. If you have your faith in Christ, but man, oh goodness, the thing that I have issues with is we say it in church. I have faith. I believe in God for it. Are you? Does your language reflect your belief? Do you come in church and say, I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name, but then go out in the world and say, hey, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing good. This is what the doctors say. You don't believe. Where's your faith? You don't believe. I, I gave to the Lord. I paid my tithes. I'm giving to the Lord of my first fruits, and I'm believing God to turn it back to me. And then on Monday morning, you're like, I don't know how God's going to do it. I, don't, I just don't know what we're going to do. We're, gonna, we're going under. Where is your faith? Abraham, the promises of Abraham sound really great. Mm-hmm. Until you go a little bit deeper and you have to really, you have to come to grips with the fact it's coupled with release. Is this this is me and mine and yours are going hand in hand. And no, we did not plan this. <laughs> me, me and Billy set up these cameras and we did not talk beforehand about no, it. Nothing. <laughs> uh, but that's how it should be. We're just having a conversation. In my life, Billy, it is hard for me sometimes because I I had to just stop thinking about how I feel and look at my life on paper. And when I look at my life on paper, I say I believe, but sometimes I don't talk like I believe. Right. And sometimes I trust God for deliver deliverance in my and for someone in my family but I don't trust God with my actions so let's talk about this like faith where is our faith you say for you it's it's releasing sometimes it's letting God do what God does so briefly as we get ready to close this in the promises of Abraham in a deeper dive of this how in your life can you demonstrate more faith so for you how do you demonstrate more faith in that vulnerability? In, the, in right. your vulnerability, you've released to us right. that you have an issue releasing. Um, Show, tell me how you do more faith there. He's a man. It's of just faith. it's the it's that hard step. I mean, going back to you know Genesis when Abraham mm-hmm. left, not knowing where he was going, not knowing why he was going, anything. He just went. Yep. I've got to be able to take that same first step that he took in pure faith. Yes. And not say, well, why am I doing this? Why do you have me pointed this way? Just walk. Just walk. And there it is. I was getting ready to ask, how, what does that look like? And Billy just nailed it. It's this, it, The Bible is incredibly simple in its great complexity. It's incredibly simple on your part. The faith portion is just walk. You know what? I have to do it. I know we're going to go longer than we should on our first one. You'll be but okay. I have to. Hebrews 11. Hang on just a second. Hebrews 11. i got to point something out. You got to hear this. Hebrews 11. <clears throat> Here we go. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and the assurance about things we do not see. This is what the ancients were commanded for. Let me read this one more time. Now, faith, in, let me give it to you in the King James Version because that's what I have memorized. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know what's funny about substance? You can touch it. You know what's mm-hmm. funny about Evidence, evidence is proof. So if faith is the substance, I can touch it, just like I'm touching this Bible or touching this coffee, which I really want to drink right now. Uh, It's it's substance. Faith is substance and it's evidence. So faith was never meant to be something you just talk about. It's meant to be something that is of substance. It's meant to be something of evidence. It proves something. It is something tangible. So Billy just nailed it with something simple. How do you... Walk. We, we have faith in Christ that makes us candidates for the promises of Abraham. But what does faith in Christ really look like? You just walk, even when you don't feel it. You just choose to have grace, even when you don't think they deserve it. You just choose, right? right? It's, yep. a, it's a tangible thing. Faith is the substance. It's, it's tangible. It's evidence to the world around us. I believe even when the doctors tell me I'm not healed. I can't tell you how many times God has moved in my life 
because of that. Acts of faith. Look mm-hmm. what happens through Abraham. Just because of an act of faith, God moves mountains. And how many times in Scripture, man, we're going in a whole new direction, but it's awesome. Um, how many times in Scripture, Billy? Like, just take a wild guess. I have no idea what the answer is. Somebody can post it on the video later. How many times did Jesus actually say, your faith has made you whole? Oh, your faith, goodness. because of your faith, your your faith. Mm-hmm. Not Yes, Jesus is power, but he said, because of your faith. It's through my power, because I'm Jesus. It's right. through Holy Spirit, because, right? It was through him, but by, he said, because of your faith, yep. right? And, so, and even in the times when they, you know, the apostles faltered, you know, one of the first things, you know, ye of little faith, why did you? It's faith. Yeah, it's, it's faith. That's the, what did it say? Uh, oh man, I, we're not, I, I, if I get my Bible back out, we'll go longer. Than we should. <laughs> but he, Abraham, is constantly referred to as a man of, of faith. Of faith, and we well, we like to think that oh, he's a man of the faith. When people say that today; they mean he believes in the Lord. That's not really what they meant. Mm-hmm. A man of faith is a man who heard God. Anybody can hear God if they're listening. If they're praying and talking yep. to the Lord, reading the Word. If you want to hear God, read the Bible. Uh, anybody can hear God if they want to. He sounds like what he wrote. But you get to be called a man of faith, a woman of faith, when you take a step based on what he said. That's different. So I guess we need to start wrapping this up because we're going to preach a sermon if we don't. <laughs> um, what has God told you? What has God told you? What has God shown you? What is God leading you to do? What has been in your spirit lately? Can I make a suggestion to you? You're a person who hears from the Lord, but you're not a person of faith until you act on it. You're not a person of faith for healing until you act upon that faith for healing. Talk healed, believe healed, testify, right? I'm not saying fake it till you make it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about believing what he said. Abraham hears from God. God says, go. Abraham says, okay. But he wasn't a man of faith until he took that first step. Where in your life do you need to take a step? What relationship do you need to take a step in or a step away from? What, what is God doing? And how can you be a child of the promise through your faith? Listen, we love you guys. Billy, he loves y'all. We love y'all. We love talking about the Lord. We Billy comes to the church and serves and sometimes we get carried away. We we have missed lunches just <laughs> talking about the Lord and the deeper things of God. Like, listen, let me wrap this up. You can tell I'm not done not done this before. Where do you need to step this week? How can you be a man or woman of faith? What has God already shown you? Take that step this week. Have a great week. Live like you belong to Christ. Be a child of the promise. Have a great week. Thanks. Okay.